Hey, welcome back to my channel. This one is gonna be so funny. Halloween Town was one of those movies that Disney Channel just decided to shove down your throat until it like became a part of your personality. And I just saw that it got added to Disney Plus. So I figured watching it would be a great way to get into the Halloween spirit. Halloween. So I just finished watching it before I'm recording right now. And <laughs> it might be the dumbest movie I've ever seen, but also a comedy masterpiece. It starts out in our regular world on Halloween night where there's three kids that are pissed that their mom won't let them dress up and go trick-or-treating. You know, you go. the odds were 50% Mom. I get one normal sister. Mom. Mom. I'm 13, okay? I'm practically a grown-up. I'm certainly old enough to make my own choices. And by the way, Marnie is like the main, main character in this, and she's the most annoying... How do I put this? She's like if Demi Lovato and Camp Rock and Debbie Ryan in real life... I want to make history. ...had a child, and all of their worst characteristics were just one. Right? I am sorry, but you are not going out on Halloween. Why? You've kept her from a normal childhood, and it's turned her into a, a wall ornament. Well, I think it's obvious why Halloween is bad. Those cavities and gum disease and those masks everybody wears of these weird kind of toxic fumes inside that make your arms go limp. <laughs> Nerd. That's Dylan. Uh, his character in this is... Nerd. He's supposed to be like the annoying skeptic little brother, but I gotta say, he charmed me. He's just like this dry humored little guy, and whenever Marnie's making me want to eat some non fat yogurt, his dry humor fixes my soul. So their grandma comes in on a flying magic school bus to teach them lessons in an unusual world. Now, where have I seen that before? Oh, Reading Rainbow. A reading Rainbow! Their mom is fine to let the grandma come for dinner, but they butt heads about whether or not the kids should be allowed to embrace their magical heritage. I'd love to have you move back home, Gwen. I mean, there's plenty of room for all of you at my house. Mother? And, and since William's passed on, there's nothing to hold you here. Nothing has to hold me here, Mother. I like being here. I can have a normal life. Oh yeah, they're all magical. And we saw this because the youngest daughter wanted cookie, so she made cookie fly. I really want that cookie. Anyways, Grandma reads them a bedtime story about Halloween Town, which she says it's a real place that she heard of, and this is like a textbook, but it's just an illustrated kids book. But in this illustrated kids book, Marnie sees a picture of a, you know, regular looking white, brown haired girl. And because she has a main character complex, she just assumes that it's her. It is me. She doesn't look anything like you. Thank you, Dylan. Mom is pissed. She kicks Grandma out of the house, but Marnie and Dylan see this, and Marnie follows after her, and then Dylan follows Marnie. They get on the Reading Rainbow bus and see some scary monsters, one of which makes an excellent Jerry Springer joke. I race a demon from the underworld, and they say, big deal, I saw the same thing on Jerry Springer. Then it takes off and flies them to another dimension. <laughs> And we're in Halloween Town, baby, and Amber is alerting everyone back on Earth. Two white nerds last seen in a magical school bus. So then we watch Grandma uh, run into her friend Harriet, who says something that in 2022 shocked me. Doing some volunteer work down at the Headless Shelter. Ha ha, very funny, but I believe the term is people experiencing headlessness. Oh yeah, and Sophie also snuck on, I guess. I called you onto the bus, but you were asleep. I was pretending. And now the mayor is talking to them. Hello there. I don't believe we've met. And that means I'm in trouble because the mayor is supposed to know everybody. I do not like fake Adam Driver. I do not trust fake Adam Driver. But he does a little magical trick and then calls a cab to take them to their grandma's house. Howdy, mayor. What's the rush? I'm on my lunch hour. Play a face. Ah, just kidding. Ooh, skeleton driver. I hope he doesn't insult a kid for getting plastic surgery. Who is he? Ah, uh, he's just a local punk. Thinks he's a big shot just because he got a nose job and had a few warts removed. This guy would lose it if he saw Instagram. If he saw a Kardashian, his bones would... His bones would milk. No. Uh, semen is... is another kind of milk. And now, despite teleporting and seeing magic and monsters with his own two eyes, Dylan is still a skeptic. He's probably animatronic. Disneyland's full of stuff like that. And I love him. And Marnie is a magicless, pathetic little loser. Be iron lock that keeps us out open up your big iron mouth you call that a spell but her sister can cast a spell so how did you do that i pushed woohoo they made it this part is very interesting to me because i'm starting to understand that there's something wrong with grandma she does not give a fuck she's just like oh cool you're here sick like not worried not like curious and not only does she not freak out when her little grandchildren have left their entire world behind she also is down to use the help of a 13, 9, and 7-year-old to defeat 
this evil monster. <laughs> what can we do to stop it? I'll show you. She might have dementia. Actually, she definitely does, because she uses the witch's brew to turn Merlin's talisman, a talisman that holds the fate of this entire universe within, uh, but it doesn't work because... Oh, wet. That's what I get for trying to use instant. Oh. So just for context, people in this world are turning into evil monsters and disappearing, and this talisman can immediately fix it. The entire movie happens because she basically tried using instant coffee and nothing else ever before. She's apparently had this talisman for like a really long time and is like, well, I gotta figure out how to save this world, but she knows that it will save it, and all she has to do is fill it with a potion, but instead of that, she just uses instant potion mix? What the fuck is this movie? She has dementia. So now the plan is to go get all the ingredients for this recipe. Werewolf hair, ghost sweat, and a vampire's fang. Surely in a world full of those things, they'll just go do that right away. Right? Surely they'll just go ask for those things from the people that have them, and then they'll save the universe, right? Grandma wouldn't just take them walking around aimlessly for hours with the fate of the universe in her hands, would she? Yes, she would, because Grandma has dementia. Oh, this is the way we always dress. Look at these things. Yes, they are a bit more snazzier. Also, this is Harriet, the woman that was trying to feed people without heads earlier, and now she's turned into an evil monster. Harriet. So Grandma goes and mentions this to the mayor, and he says, about it. Don't worry about it. I just ran into Harriet and she's completely changed. I want you to leave this alone for now. Especially with the children. So he's definitely the bad guy because he's also the only character we know. But why is he? And also what's happening? I'm not exaggerating. Right now at this point right here, we are two thirds of the way through the movie and zombie Elvis just sold Marnie a broom and their mom teleported here somehow? How are we already like this far into the movie and nothing has happened yet? There's no conflict. There's hints of potential conflict, but nothing really. This finger gun is more conflict than I've seen this entire movie. Got him. They're just walking around doing random bullshit while the fate of Halloween Town apparently rests in the hands of this grandma with crippling dementia. Also, the mom is a witch, and uh, we found out that she wants to stay on Earth because that's where her dead husband is from. Rip. And now she wants to take her kids home, but these two jackasses won't give her a bus ride back until like seven hours from now. Excuse me, what about the bus? It'll, It'll be, be several, several hours. hours. Yeah, several hours. Several hours. Uh, and engine yeah. trouble. Anyways, Marnie is a, uh, a loser. I guess we can't I leave after all. And the mom has to go ask the mayor for help. Calabar. <laughs> You're the mayor? But uh-oh, she has a history with the mayor, and he tries to have sex with her. You always did let your magic do the talking. You used to like it. Or have you forgotten that part? What's going on here? But it's a kid's movie, so it's all just subtext. But look me in the eyes and tell me that the subtext is not that he's trying to have sexual intercourse with April from the Ninja Turtles. Say, I ought to show you around. We could take the Styx River cruise, have a little dinner, then I could show you all our old home. Huh? Excuse me, sir. Just to keep you. I'll get right to the point. I have a very urgent message. Somebody's on pins and needles. <laughs> and I don't know what the heck that was, but I guess it was an emergency, and now the mom has no help. Even though if this uh, if this mayor actually is the bad guy, it would be in his best interest to get these powerful witches out of his world. But anyways, the movie doesn't uh, ever make sense. Meanwhile, Luke, uh, that ugly kid that got plastic surgery, he tells grandma that the evil guy wants to meet with her and he wants her talisman. I know you've got Merlin's talisman and he wants it. Also, he ran into grandma and Marnie earlier and was just kind of being like a normal, kind of little jackass and Marnie went DEFCON 3 on him. Hey, don't sell me too short there, Grammy. I'm something of a big cheese around here. Maybe I can show you around sometime. You know, I was kind of hungry, but then I smelled something stinky. It must have been the big cheese. DEFCON 3, not DEFCON 3, like in a Kanye anti-Semitic way. The anti-Semitism occurs later in this movie. Anyways, Marnie sees Grandma following him and chases after her, and then the, the rest of the family's like, ah, oh, Marnie, and then they chase after her. Guys, come on. Why do the troublemakers get all the attention? They all end up in a zombie theater, and finally, with 20 minutes left in the movie, the first act ends. So just a first act ass movie. Inciting incident ass movie. Set up and world building ass movie. <laughs> Alive. Merely 
frozen in time. <laughs> he tells the grandma his plan, and the evil guy, his plan is to freeze people, because then he controls them. Anyways, he engages in one of the most intense magical fights I've ever seen. And I know sometimes I will like build up something as if it's really cool, and it's just not. But this is genuinely like Harry Potter, Prisoner of Azkaban levels of... <laughs> Hours beating vanquished by my power. Huh? I said powers, not flowers. No! Yeah. Um. So now Grandma and Mom are frozen, and the kids are alone. But Marnie, smart Marnie, sees that the evil guy can't be in the light. So she says, hmm. You crazy? That shadow thing is going to turn us into statues. It isn't going to follow us. Didn't you see? It can't stand the light. How about we go start collecting those ingredients? With 15 minutes left in the movie, there's 15 minutes left in this movie, and they finally do what Dementia Grandmother should have been doing months ago. This should be like the second half of the first act, or, or, or even the second act. But what? Anyways, there's no, there's no, there's no, there's no point. Uh, they steal hair from a werewolf hairdresser in a very chill, fun way. Baby! I got it, I got it, I got the it! The other buttons do not put the thing down, baby! And then they go and annoy a ghost in a sauna for seemingly no real reason. He's like trapped in there. He's not gonna move. I don't know why they're doing that. Hey, kid, I don't appreciate stereotypes like that, alright? But then Marnie collects a drop of his sweat. Burn it up! Yes. And then they go to a dentist's office to get a vampire's fang. And, uh... Okay, you know how people criticize J.K. Rowling for making the goblins anti-Semitic caricatures in Harry Potter? I'm not Jewish. I'm not. But, um... I don't know. I could be wrong. I could be wrong. I don't know everything. But that feels weird. Uh, I, uh... Ooh, 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 ooh. Vampire's fang. Yes! As they're leaving, the skeleton cab driver pulls up and offers to take them somewhere. I got it! <laughs> Why don't you let me give you a lift? On the house! But they don't really trust this guy. Come on, get in! Wait, who told you our mom was here? So he just fucking chokes a nerd. <laughs> but what you might not know about a skeleton is that uh, it's made of bones. It's a bony boy. So Sophie finds a perfectly placed dog right next to them and just kind of lets it loose. And that bone-loving dog goes and chases a bony boy, and that's and, and that's that. <laughs> So they go home and they make the witch's brew with these ingredients and luckily Sophie remembers the words for the spell that their grandma tried to cast earlier. They try it once and it doesn't work. But then Marnie remembers that you're supposed to try hard and then it does work. You did it you guys, it's lit! It's lit! Um Okay, so we now have 10 minutes left in the entire movie, and when I t this is the most absurd structuring I've ever seen in a movie. 50 actual minutes of this movie was just wandering around with whispers of wind of, oh, maybe something's going on underneath the surface. 50 minutes. Then the plot happens out of nowhere with just, you know, 20 minutes left in the movie. The second act should be the longest and most exciting, but it's 10 minutes. And then we have 10 minutes now to finish everything. It's not, I don't know what the, f I, I, okay, I just, okay. It's lit! So they go back to the theater and the talisman doesn't do shit. What word, you dumb thing, work! Why isn't it working? But because of the way this movie works, Marnie remembers grandma saying that the earth just copied Halloween Town's culture like the Kardashians do. And so that means. What about it? Well, when it's dark on Halloween, where do you put the candle? Come on. Seems like a weird leap with no logic or buildup, but you know, that's just the entire movie. What about it? But wait, oh no, Luke had a change of heart and said that the evil guy set a trap and is waiting for her. The trap, he's waiting for you. But I thought that the evil guy couldn't be in the daylight. I thought that was a big part of the, I thought that was the whole, whole thing. Follow me, my fellow citizens of Halloween Town. Oh, there he is, just shit. I guess he just changed his mind. He just said, I'm better. I'm a man, I'm a male. Forced to live here in this Halloween town! Oh, and here we go. Uh, the movie's almost over, and now he's telling us his plan. So, he wants to take back control of Earth. And to do that, he's been freezing his own people and disappearing them. 
but also controlling them. But also now he's down to just do his little Hitler speech and rally the unmagical frozen ones, and it's working? So, seems like none of this has mattered at all, but Marnie has a magic talisman, so I hope that helps. I don't know how. Hellbar? <laughs> can't believe Mom dated that guy. Oh shit! The only other character in the movie is the bad guy? Oh my god! And he's also just freely uh, showing us for no reason. This, okay, anyways. So why was he looking evil in the first place? And what is the talisman supposed to do? Does it unfreeze everyone? Because all the people down there are unfrozen already and they look down with Halloween Hitler. So his plan makes no sense. This movie makes no sense. Maybe I have dementia too. So Marnie now is gonna go try to put the talisman in the pumpkin. Oh no, he's gonna get her. Oh shit, oh, it's a boy. Oh no, she's, oh no, she's gonna do it. Oh no, he got her. Oh no, she's different. What? Okay, cool. Anyways, so she just wakes up, tosses it, goes back, and then wakes back up. And then Grandma and Mom are unfrozen, and nothing else has really changed. But hopefully they can stop him. <laughs> and he just used the force to take the talisman. Okay, how will they ever stop him? Through the power of family. Hey, it will spread like a dark shadow. Oh, no way! And also now Dylan uh, can do magic because of the power of family. <laughs> and they hum, I guess. I guess humming kills him. Sick. No! <gasps> and they won. Uh, there was about 15 minutes of story there, which, you know, is about as much as an episode of Bob's Burgers, so I think that's cool. And then it's sweet, Mom caves and apologizes to Marnie, then Marnie apologizes to Mom, then Mom apologizes to Grandma and says that, you can have your way, Grandma. You know, Mother, I have to admit you're really very good with them. The kids and Mom will move to Halloween Town. Right? The thing that the protagonists have been wanting this entire movie will happen, right? They're all gonna move to Halloween Town, right? Well, then I guess you're just gonna have to come live with us. <gasps> no, Grandma will move to Earth. The exact opposite of what all the characters have been wanting this entire time. But Grandma is happy about it? What? I don't think it's cool to manipulate and take advantage of elderly women with dementia. But for April from the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, I can forgive anything. So believe it or not, that was Halloween Town. I don't know what the heck was happening on Disney Channel back in 1998, but I'm very grateful. What other movies should I look back and make videos about like this? Please subscribe, I love you. Oh,